Hello and welcome back to the Lore Raider. This year is the 25th anniversary of the Tomb Raider series and of Lara Croft. And as a completely irrelevant part of the Tomb Raider community, I decided I needed to do something to mark the occasion. And I have decided I'll do that by discussing a criminally underrated and overlooked part of the Tomb Raider history, the comics. So without further ado, let's get in. After the success of Core Design's Tomb Raider, having debut on October 25th, 1996, the world was quickly clambering for more Tomb Raider content and more Lara Croft. And Core Design signed off on a lucrative comic book deal with Top Cow Productions after a long struggle to obtain the rights to the franchise. Already well known for their Switchblade series, among others, Top Cow quickly began plans for a series of Tomb Raider comics that existed largely within the same universe as the Top Cow universe. The comic was largely based on Core Design's continuity to start, as Lara Croft is involved in a plane crash at 21 years old with her parents and fiancé who die in the blaze, and her adventures will continue from that experience onward. The series was written by names such as Dan Jurgen, John Nay Ribber, James Bonney, and the art was designed by the likes of Andy Park, Michael Turner, Billy Tan, and of course, Adam Hughes. The series finally hit store shelves in December of 1997, a month after Tomb Raider 2 released to critical acclaim back in November of the same year, and making the comic the second Tomb Raider timeline ever released, almost a full decade before the Tomb Raider Legends ever released in 2006. Over its run, the comic series would cross over with Top Cow's other franchises such as Witchblade, The Magdalena, and Fathom, and in 1999, the debut issue of Tomb Raider comic was the number one selling comic of the year. Keep in mind, beating the likes of Marvel, DC, and other great indie comics. The series went to release 51 issues of the comic, released monthly up until its conclusion in 2005. But what did readers at the time love about the original Tomb Raider comics? And why should you read it in 2021? This lore was what fans experienced in Tomb Raider 1 and 2 but taken further into the action genre. It certainly contained a lot of tomb raiding, but it was the first piece of tomb raider media overall to flesh out the world of the series in a meaningful way, as the comic takes Lara to more locations than she's been in any video game ever released, when encountering various peoples and organizations. In one issue, Lara Croft literally goes to the far future as a prisoner, and in another, she's traveled back in time to the dinosaurs and, eats and fights an evil witch. It also fleshes out Lara's character right even from the earliest chapters, as during the earliest chapters we see the messy aftermath of her relationship with rival Tomb Raider Chase Carver, we repeatedly see what separates her from a common grave robber to a real Tomb Raider, and while still of course giving the reader the sassy and sarcastic Lara we all know and adore. Basically, if you took classic game Lara and you gave her a Netflix show about her life, that is what you'd be getting with this comic. But instead of aimlessly ranting, let's break down individually why this comic is so great, even in 2021. Let's start off with the characters because I think this could very well be among the comic's strongest points. The characters are all fun to read about and experience. From Lara's seemingly warm and helpful but ultimately devious butler Compton, to her sometimes lover, sometimes sidekick Chase Carver, to the myriad of suspicious and shady employers that Lara finds herself being employed by over the course of the series, all the characters serve a purpose in the story and execute it well. The characters can be intimidating when the situation calls for it, but oftentimes the best part of the comic is the banter between characters when they are put in high stakes situations, as many, many people die in these comics and you never know who's going to live and who's going to die, thus raising the stakes. Especially near the end of the series as Laura is seemingly leading friend after friend to their deaths. Aside from a few characters such as Laura herself, as well as Chase Carver and I think that <laughs> anti-flesh guy who was kind of the main antagonist for like the, the mid-late part of the series, not many of the characters have an extreme amount of depth. 
but what is there is entertaining. It is also quite interesting to see Lara interact with characters from the rest of the Top Cow Productions universe, as Lara Croft is actually friends with Sarah Pizzeni, the current wielder of the titular Witchblade, and encounters Jackie Estacado, who is technically a DC character, which is, again, funny to think about Lara Croft running around in the same universe as Batman and Superman, and never mentioning their name. The crossover characters add a lot, I think, to the universe as both characters in their own right, but also what they imply for the world-building story at large. Speaking of story... I've heard many people say this whole comic line was nothing but a giant fan service project, nothing but a cash grab, just a flim flam. To those people, I say, you're completely and utterly wrong. The way the comic is broken down, dear viewer, is that there will either be a large arc that spans two to four issues in length, usually with Lara trying to obtain some artifact, but oftentimes these arcs are connected to one another, which forms the character's arcs and the overall story. At the beginning of the comic, Lara is at a relative high point in her life, but she raises an important question. What does it mean to be a Tomb Raider and not a Grave Robber? By the end of the series, Lara herself gives her final answer to her own question after having gone through many ups and many downs that changes her answer through time, through the events of the story. Whilst the structure isn't revolutionary, it's still a sign of smart writing that the people behind the project were invested in their jobs. An example of how the comic repeatedly tries to answer this question is when Lara is early on in the series contacted by her mother's old lover, who tasks her with retrieving the legendary Medusa Mask. However, the artifact is extremely powerful and dangerous even in the best of hands, where a common grave robber would simply and handily sell the artifact for a heap of cash, or even use it for themselves for their self-gain, Lara only asks for one last relic of her mother the man had and gave him the helm, knowing full well that he put it on and ultimately kill himself, thus preventing the helm from ever being used or abused again. The point is that Lara is giving character depth. Yes, she does play for sport, as she so eloquently says, but she has scruples as well. She has morality. That's what's important. The individual issue arcs are also very good. Many of these are simple face value adventures undertaken by Lara and a friend, but many of them are absolute bangers as well. For example, when she finds the lost city of Shangri-La and risks her life repeatedly and ultimately was willing to accept punishment for the chance of to save a dying woman who meant much to her. Two more suspenseful arcs that are more overreaching or how, of how she was having to contend with the embodiment of anti-matter itself, as both had to try and outwit and outmanipulate the other before their inevitable showdown. Really, this comic rarely has a straight-up miss. I'm willing to admit the art style isn't necessarily revolutionary or groundbreaking, and better comics have certainly been made. I point to Neil Gaiman's Sandman, for example. However, I'd like to show that the comic is no worse than any Marvel or DC comic from the same time period. And when the comic wants to, it can look damn good. And it's rarely ever that I can say that what's on the page doesn't look interesting. And I can say that it is easy to follow the narrative of the story via the art, and it doesn't make me stop midway through a chapter to figure out what I'm looking at. All in all, it's solid work, but nothing to blow you away. But I'll share some scenes that I thought were pretty cool. Most of them are really the first page of the comic, the front page, because they're really good. So enjoy!
I don't think you can talk about classic Tomb Raider for long before you have to tackle the elephant in the room. In this day of political revisionism and the era of Rey and Skywalker, and things that are being scrutinized more than ever, it's no surprise that many look back at the older Lara Croft and claim that she is nothing more than a sex object. Aye, candy! Now the Tomb Raider community are degenerate scum for liking her. That she has no personality. That we only like her for the tits. It's no secret that the Tomb Raider of the series does not shy away from highlighting qualities present in the classic Tomb Raider series. I mean, she is very voluptuous, but she still killed me. Like but is that all the comic is? Fan service? The answer is obviously a resounding no. Lara Croft is ultimately a power fantasy character, and this Lara is no different. She's smart, acrobatic, a survival extraordinaire. She's capable of literally punching people through wooden beans. She kills shit with guns and makes sarcastic comments. But she isn't perfect like what these naysayers would have Lara become. She's no Ray Skywalker, and she's no Captain Marvel. Lara can be tricked. She can be vulnerable. She doesn't need any man, but she can certainly have feelings for one. She can be defeated in combat. She can be hurt and outsmarted. Just like classic gaming Lara and most versions of her character after her, this Lara is a person, a fleshed out, realized person. But don't take my word for it, read the comic yourself. So to ask you again, should you read Tomb Raider the series in 2021? Yes, absolutely. If you're a fan of classic Lara, of Legends Lara, or any Lara, then the comics are a must read. The characters are great, the story is complex, the visuals are very nice to look at, and easy to follow. It's more quality Tomb Raider content, and it should be remembered on Lara's 25th anniversary right alongside all the other pieces of material. But I've been your host, the Lore Raider. I hope you will like, share, and subscribe for more Tomb Raider videos in the future. Until then, stay safe out there, and take care.